My name is Amar Jyot Singh, and I'm here to talk to a gentleman in Toronto area who just uh, recently, maybe a month ago, actually came on a study visa, a spouse visa with family. And my interest is always to talk to those people to find out, to discover what secrets they have employed and how did they do this application and how did they got the visa. So without delay, let me just welcome Mr. Benoit. Is that right, Benoit, that's your name? That's correct. Benoy from Toronto area, right? Toronto? Are you in Toronto? Right. That's right. Okay. So uh, welcome to Canada. Tell me, how, how did you come to Canada and how did you connect with me though? Well, uh, I was looking at you know, options to come here um, on a study visa for my wife and you know, get a, a work visa for myself uh, so that in the future we can you know, build up our points for PR since our age is 35 plus. Um, so I was checking YouTube and other websites. I came across your video as well. Um, so after looking at your videos and a lot of other consultation, I realized that you know, age should not be a hindrance uh, to come on a study visa. What, what, is, what is your age? I'm 41. You're, you're... You are 41 and your wife is 36. Uh, wife is 36 and uh, your wife is a student and you are a dependent. What What is your uh, profession? What was your profession in India? I'm into IT. You are an IT engineer, uh, consultant software? Management. I'm into management. Yeah, you are an IT management in uh, Bangalore, right? Yes. In Bangalore. Okay. And your wife was uh, also working uh, in IT? Oh, she was in HR. She was in HR, okay. Yeah. And uh, if I may ask, if you don't want to uh, tell, that's okay. But uh, what course uh, uh, did she take admission into Canada? And what is she studying right now? What university? She's doing a master's in project management uh, in Northeastern wow. University. Master's in project management. This is a two-year yeah. course? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, she got the visa, study visa, uh, directly, quickly, without any uh, problem. Was she never refused in the past? Or is the first time she got the Canada visa, right? Yeah, it was not quick. Uh, it took uh, almost one year after application for us to get the result. Okay. But, but there was no rejection. Yeah. Does she, does she have any previous travel history to some other country before uh, applying to Canada? Yeah, she's been to Canada on visiting visa before. So she, she already has. She already had a previous visitor visa to Canada. Yeah, Canada. She's been to other countries as well. Um, oh, good. So she Asian has. Yeah, she has a good travel history. Okay. All right. Good. And um, um, how how was her uh, English language score in this uh, in this degree program? What was the IELTS? Seven. Uh, but. Right. That's that's wonderful. So, uh, did you not try to talk to some consultant in Bangalore as most people do? We did. So we did talk to a lot of consultants. Uh, they were very hesitant to take our case, looking at our age and the cap. Uh, but then we found one who was ready to work with us. Uh, so we worked with that consultant agent, and we also gave a lot of inputs. We had to push a little bit from our end as well uh, to put in our applications together and not separately. Yeah. We didn't want to you know, get separated for any reason. Your kids, your kids are having a good time in Canada in the background. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, so a lot of consultants were hesitant to take your file because of the age and because of the mature status of the student. And uh, uh, you could only find one one consultant who could help you, right? In Bangalore? Correct. Yeah. But uh, did you do this application on your own pretty much or he did this application for you? We did it together, basically. I was always uh, on the phone and screen sharing with them. Yeah. So I was confident, but I wanted a second eye as well. You know? yeah. Someone experienced doing it along with me. We didn't want to make any mistakes. Yeah. So we did it together. Yeah. One one of That's the advantage one of the advantage that you have is uh, I think you're an IT guy IT background and you could uh, navigate things on your own instead of depending on somebody else to do it for you. Uh, 
uh, and uh, you know you have yes. a, you have a higher education experience level, so it makes easy for the other consultant also to you know work with you uh, cooperatively, and then do this as a joint project. Yes, and we knew there is a risk. Uh, you know, they were also aware of it. Yeah, and it took one year to process. We were patient with them; they were patient with us. You know, we never had any rough conversation because of yeah. you know the situation. It, it was luck. <laughs> Now Sorry. it was luck. Now luck is nothing but the hard work and preparation. Uh, now, uh, now, did you did you file this joint application like all together, husband, wife, and children together? So uh, we all had visiting visas for Canada already. Uh, so wife had traveled. Uh, we had taken our visas to travel, but then came the pandemic, so we could not travel. So, so mine was a visiting visa. Children already had visiting visa. Now, I needed a work visa to come. So when we applied for my wife's study visa, we applied for her study visa and my work visa. We did not apply for kids because they could anyway come on their visa. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I didn't say it. But uh, when when your wife's study visa application was filed, yours, your work visa application was also filed in the same submission. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's all I want to hear. Okay. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, and... Uh, it, it took, uh, when, did, when did you file, uh, when, when was the application filed for both husband and wife, what month? 2020. I'm sorry, which month? September. September 2020. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when, did, when did you get the final approval for both husband and wife? Uh, August 2021, end of August. Oh, wow! Wow! August twenty twenty one. And uh, did she had to defer the course and the study visa uh, the, for the program, or she had admission for the September? And she she. I mean, the the admission is for August and January. Uh, for January. Admission was for January twenty twenty one. Okay. So she started online anyway. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So she started online before even she got the study visa. Correct. Okay. And and during the processing delay. We kept updating IRCC with the status on the course yeah. completion. Every quarter she scored yeah. this in March, and we used to submit the transcript to show that you know she's a genuine yeah. student. She scored. That sounds like a, that sounds like a perfect application for the cons lucky consultant who got your application. I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, your your age is uh, did you say forty one? Yes. And your wife is thirty six. Thirty six. And uh, what was the gap in the study uh, program for the wife uh, because she is 36? When was the last uh, study that she did uh, previously? 2007, she passed out. Okay, so there's a gap of what, 14 years? Yeah, almost 13, 14 years in between when she took her maternity as well. So. Wow, wow. A uh, lot, lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people wonder in India and other countries also, I get a lot of inquiries from Saudi and other countries that people who are 40 plus, 45, even 50 plus, they wonder uh, whether they are a student or not. Because I we know that if you apply in India and uh, Indian universities have a discrimination on the age, because if you pass a certain age, they don't get you admission. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Uh, and people, people have some kind of, you know, phobia on, if I'm not a student in India, how is it that the visa officer in Canada and America will take me as a student? And they always have some kind of uh, psychosis on, you know, am I really a student? How come I will get to study visa? But your case has exemplified that visa can be, and you know, it's, yours is not the first one, by the way. So- Yes, I've seen your videos, there are many more. We had, we had multiple examples, of, <clears throat> uh, we got, uh, I think last uh, last month or so we had somebody who was around 50 uh you know and uh, he also got the visa uh, you know so that's that's wonderful so what can i do for you and how did you get contacted with me first of all <laughs> well i was trying to figure out if uh, you know, while our process was getting delayed and we were yet to put on our application i was trying to understand you know who can i reach out to who's uh, genuine or who can give the right advice yeah. say no when it needs to be said no and say yes when it is yes or doubtful when it's doubtful so i yeah. came across your videos on can very general uh, you know those few people uh you know on certain advices which you felt was wrong that's what right. looking for. So, that's so i followed those advices and so i learned 
to a lot of other research as well. So what can be done, cannot be done. We chose the right course, I guess. That is important too. For someone who has this experience, just the master's is not enough. Master's and specific course would make more sense. Yeah. So that's how she chose the course as well. Yeah. What what is the what is the key what is the key takeaway in uh, in your discussion? If I may, if I may uh, what I picked up and if I may if I may state here, number one advantage is uh, that both of you are working professionals. Uh, you are not unemployed. You are not like a housewife or unemployed husband or something. Number one key difference is both of you are working professionals and also in the technical like IT field. That's one great, uh, do you agree? Yes, that is there. Yeah, so uh, that is that is one key uh, starting, uh, you know, advantage just to get started off the race. And the second is uh, uh, the student has a good English as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the third is also, you already have uh, a previous travel history for Canada. That's a great boost. Uh, if you if you already have a previous travel history, especially to Canada, you know the immigration IRCC knows that you can be trusted because if you travel and return, I mean, you are you are uh, uh, credulous, uh, and you know you, you can be uh, you know we, I mean we can give you the visa. I mean you'll not misuse the visa quite easily. Yes. Uh, yes. So that that's a big uh, big advantage that that you have and. Uh, the the course that she is doing at present it's a, it's she's also going to a university for a full master's degree which will lead to a good credential in the future and possibly good marks in the express entry so that's also a big bonus mm -hmm. uh, a, a majority of students from india they like to go and study in a college which is a cheaper which is a smaller course maybe 8 months or 1 year and they think you know why not save money but it's called you know Penny wise pound foolish. I mean, you save on something, but later on you lose the time to get a longer work permit and, and the chance to qualify for experience uh, coming from <laughs> work permit. So, and and uh, the refusal rate for for colleges is uh, slightly higher than that of universities for sure. So that's that's another bonus in your point. So I think you you got a. Uh, you got a stunning victory uh, on your project, and the, I, I welcome you to Canada. And uh, you know, uh, you you deserve it. Uh, what what Thank questions you. do you have for me? <clears throat> well, from here on, I mean, the journey is not over yet. We are looking for for to the next steps, and we thought okay. we start preparing now itself uh, because you know, studying online for nine months, we lost some time there. Okay. Um, right. So our visas are valid for next year. Uh, for that, whatever preparations we need to do. To yeah. get her, um, you know, uh, postgraduate work from it and extension for my work from the other schools. I needed your help. Yeah. Can you there. can you see my screen? Uh, can you see something on my on your screen? Yes. What do you see? CEC Express Entry. Yes. That's right. That's right. So since you are in Canada now and your wife will uh, graduate, uh, you know, whenever she does. So this is, this is the flagship program for all students. Uh, this is called CEC Canadian Experience Class. And as you can see on the screen, it requires uh, a, a certain experience, one year of skill. You can see it clearly on your screen, I guess. Yes, uh, yes, I'm aware of this. But, so, so we so, are racing against time, right? Uh, I mean, every year uh, I lose 10 points, she loses five. And, I know, that's, that, that's okay. Don't worry about the, don't worry yes. about the diminishing points on the age. That's okay. I think she will make up some other way. So mm -hmm. uh, this is, this is a majority of uh, the students go through CEC class. So this is one, I would want you to go to uh, Government of Canada website and type, or type CEC in Google and you can see all the requirements. So this is something that uh, you know, you would you would uh, want to keep it as a favorite bookmark and then see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll show you something. There's something called a rural and northern immigration pilot program. This is also a program for people who have qualifying work experience or have graduated from that place. And maybe not in your wife's case, graduation, she is not, maybe not from that uh, place, but yeah. um, if she has, uh, if she can get a job offer in that place, in and and you know the the place uh, are given here. Let me see where that is. Uh, second time, okay, ten to eleven. Yeah, this is the name of the, all the places. 
Mm -hmm. so this is these are all the you know all the places yeah. uh, where if she if she gets a job and then she if she work if she works here for a minimum period of some time here then this is a another way another pathway of going to the immigration all right so this is something that uh, you can you can always bookmark and check it out uh third way is also can you see on the screen yeah this is called Ontario Nominee Program or NP. It, it gives you all the streams which are available for people to apply because she is studying in Ontario. Uh, what what city she is? Toronto. She is in Main Toronto. Okay. Yeah. So so the I mean these these things change all the time. OINP is uh, quite uh, busy and they have many applicants than the slots. Uh, these are the these are the um, streams right now. They are taking in you can see on the screen highlighted uh, yeah these are the streams that they are taking in right now and uh, you know uh, pretty much uh, uh, in the, you, you you should you should follow uh, you should follow what what they are for example they it used to be a few years ago like human capital priority stream they, they were taking it people uh, and it uh, I, I do not know if they are taking it now or not but this is where you should keep on checking and then and get yourself ready on you know whether it's something that uh, maybe she she may qualify based on uh, based on you know the occupation. I don't see the occupation here. It used to always say you know this is all like IT and the software engineer and stuff. Yeah, there was a draw recently, but it was mostly for that's uh, right, that's right, workers, not, not so, for. So so they, so they keep on so they keep on changing, and yeah. you know uh, just uh, just uh, you know pretty much uh, keep your eye on this on this website all the time. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, French speaking. You don't speak French skill trades. You're no. not. You're not an entrepreneur. Uh, international student stream also as well. Take a look at international student stream. Uh, so one question that I have now: I am on an open work permit. That's right. And if I have an employer job offer uh, from Ontario, yeah, can I apply for OINP or I cannot because I am on a dependent open work permit? Well, then it's a, it's a different, it's a different, this is not the, this, yes, not this one, not yeah, this one, not, not this track, but let's, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's run through the track anyway. So okay. this is, this is for, uh, this is for international students with a job. It's very, very clear, actually, it's not very difficult. It's so international students with a job and skill, like your, like your, like your, like your wife, for example. Right? So this is something you can, uh, you know, just, uh, just, just keep in mind. So it tells you, uh, who can apply somebody who has a diploma just like your wife this is good for your wife just like something who had a two years of degree diploma blah 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 something and uh, they have a job offer so this is this program is 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 for for her so for somebody like you uh you have to just keep watching the website to see if they are even taking applications sometimes they don't sometimes they uh, sometimes they do and you know they just uh, just mention on the website so they want they're expecting everybody to look, looking at the website so like yeah. somebody like you, for example, uh, like here, uh, foreign worker stream. Uh, so you are you are foreign worker, you have a work permit, all right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. are, are you with me? Yes. Okay, so you, you, are, you are a skilled foreign worker. If you have a job offer in Ontario, this is the right page. Let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look here. So blah, 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 blah. It gives a foreign worker to the job. Okay, so this, this is what it is. So this is open is open for foreign workers in and outside of Canada. Make sure mandatory requirements. It tells you what kind of job offer do you need. You know, you have to be a skilled job offer with good salary and stuff. Applicants requirement. What is the applicant requirement? Uh, require a uh, job offer is okay. You you will have a, like a IT job, right? That's what you you get, I guess, right? I'm into IT management. The second point is what I qualify here. Yeah. So second bullet. So, yeah, that's right. So it tells you it, it tells you exactly what you need as a job experience. It tells you uh, everything. Yes. Everything is right here. So, so I wanted uh, to know, being on a dependent visa, does it stop no, me no, or no. from applying for this? No, no, it, no, it does not. It does not. Okay. If you if you fulfill all the conditions here based on the job experience and how much job experience you have, at least two years of cumulative paid for living experience, blah blah blah, something. You know, so you you have to look at all these things. Uh, you know. Yes, I, uh, I read through this. Just, yeah. just had one question there. This this may work for you. Just just follow the entire uh, thing. Mm -hmm. This may so so 
if you have a job offer and if you qualify into this, you may you may file for PR as soon as you are eligible into this without waiting for your wife to even graduate and then go to her, her own channel. Right. So you can you can always do that as well. Now there's another program called uh, let's see if I can find that. It's called uh, uh, what is your uh, uh, it's called a global what is what is this called uh, global skills fair. Talent scheme. Or... No, 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 it's, it's uh, Spanish. Oh, here it is. Global skills center. So there's another another program called global skills strategy, uh, mm -hmm. which is for IT. People like you, uh, you can see on my screen, I guess. Yes. All right. So this is for people who are, uh, and this is a very fast process. If you can get a IT related uh, job job offer, uh, you know, uh, pretty much you can you can uh, you can apply it directly. It's called sorry, it's called Global Talent Stream. Uh, yep. Maybe it's not okay. Let me see. I think there's a occupations listed here. Where are they talking about the global talent occupation list? It tells you computer system manager engineer. Do you see that list? Zero two one yeah. one four seven two one seven one blah blah. So you may you may uh, probably pretty much get something in two one seven one. Uh, two so, two eight two actually. I'm sorry. Two two what two? Double two eight two is. So, so you have to concept. you have to look at the NOC. The, this is this. Yes. Uh, these are only the NOCs which are available in that. You know, it's called global talent. Uh, occupation list, so you can you know, pretty much uh, you know go and, and read that. So this is for people who are uh, there's another category. So even if it is not in that field, it has to have a minimum of you know that's uh, uh, that that salary level. It tells you, you know how much salary. So you can read through it and you can show this to your uh, to your employer and then you know tell them. Look, uh, maybe I need to apply. If if you want to work here, I need to, uh, you know, I need to be sponsored for, uh, for uh, you know, for PR under under this. This global talent stream actually is what was initially intended for people to get to Canada on a fast track work permit. So uh, uh, the people who are some some occupation, these occupations, if you if you get a minimum of those salaries, they are exempt from LMIA. And they qualify for a two-week processing of the work permit. Uh, so if they're applying from, uh, you know, applying outside Canada, but if you if you are, you know, you don't need the LMIA, you can tell them, look, I need to be sponsored. So if they are willing to even do a LMIA for you because you don't need it for work permit, you can make an express entry profile as well, and you can claim about uh, fifty points depending on the occupation. Yeah, I'll review this as well. Yeah. So this, this is this uh, this uh, channel is 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 custom made for IT people, you know, engineering software, IT consulting. So these oh, are uh, these are the pretty much all the channels, and and you can independent even though you are a dependent uh, on a spouse open work permit, which is which is C forty two class work permit, you can fulfill your. Uh, your own ambition through a separate PR process and, and get this process done quickly without even waiting for your wife to enter express entry. So, sir, my question is, you know, I, I know a lot of information is available here, right. um, but while going through this, uh, yeah. like we did with our study visa and our work permit, I would like to go through a you know, good registered you know, IRCC agent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you if possible and ensure that i'm doing everything right even if i'm doing it myself or with you so is that something that you help with this well, these kind of processes applications yes I, yes I do so uh once you have a job offer and once you have confirmed the job offer you can always uh um you know uh, you contact me I'm, I'm accessible to you and then you can uh, and we can go from there and uh, and, sure. and, and get started so uh sure. Yeah. Once you once you have once you have the uh, uh, the the job and you are actually working, you mm -hmm. are you are on on fast track for pretty much a, a you know, lot of options. Uh, if the employer if the employer is in uh, 
uh, is in Ontario, and many employers, of course, IT jobs are very likely you can even qualify something on the screen. Do you see that? Yes, this is what I was targeting first. Yeah. And, so, uh, there's no sponsorship needed from employer here. I think uh, some documents are needed. Uh, that's all. Yeah. So is a job offer is needed. I don't know what you what you yeah, job offer is something what, that I will get. What you refer to uh, sponsorship, you need a job offer. Yes. Uh for sure. And then uh, you know that's what definitely you need. But I'm not sure it's it does not say do you need a minimum job experience within Ontario to apply? It does not say no, it says you need to have the same NOC code job experience in your yeah. previous country for at least three years, which I have. Which you have, which is uh, yeah. at least two years. It does not specify. Do you need this job experience within Canada? No, or Canada? it doesn't. It doesn't. And, and so this is this is a good uh, gray area for uh, for you to you know proceed. And then, uh, yeah. So uh, this this is a this is a great program for somebody like you. So uh, you are custom made for this <laughs> for this <laughs> for this program because uh, very likely uh, Front Row will have uh, some IT jobs for you. Uh, you already have a work permit. This work permit is worth its weight in gold. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it gets you to qualify and work, work and earn money and, and those things. And uh, you are on, 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 a, on a rapid accelerated fast track process on OINP. Now, uh, OINP uh, has a quota, which they don't tell you, but I think the quota is around 5,000 or 6,000 uh, mm -hmm. per year. They, if they are if they are depleted on the quota for this year, maybe for next year coming January, maybe who knows. Uh, but you know, that's that's all. But uh, either way, as soon as you have a job uh, and you are starting to work, and then you can always, uh, you know, pretty much you can tap me and then you can go from there. Sure, I will do that. that that's what I was looking for. It tells you all the uh, job offer, pretty much, uh, you know, checklist and stuff. It tells you everything on it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a it's not a mystery here. Is everything is quite clear. So uh, is that is that a good is that an employer is a big employer or a small employer? I'm trying with my uh, you know previous employer, uh, which I was working for in India. Yeah. Same office here in Canada, Toronto itself. Yeah. So yeah. See if I can get employed there itself. Everything the same, right? The job remains the same, just that the state or yeah. the country changes. That's it. That's good. So there's another. Uh, uh, Program for technical people in British Columbia is called BC Tech Program, BC PNP Tech. Do you see on the screen? Correct. Yeah. So they may, if you get a job, I, if you get a job in BC, so this is something that you can also, you can see on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I can. There are some occupations listed there. Let's take a look uh, if those occupations are. Those occupations are being used. Sometimes they, don't, they hide this information. You know, they don't keep you quite uh, you know, easy. But uh, I'm just trying to see, uh, see that. Uh, maybe I'm missing. Where is the list of occupations? Oh, here it is. Let's take a look. Um, you see that? Yeah. Yeah. It tells you a lot of occupations, 29 occupations. And the IT, yes. did, you want, did you say yours was 281? 2282. Oh, uh, and zero to one three, both are kind of you know it's yeah, a mix two, of both. Yeah, two to eight two is user support. It's like working in BP or multinational. So that's uh, yeah. That's two to eight two, and zero to one three also. Yeah, it's a combination of both actually. So that's where I need the legal assistance. You know? That's right. That's right. So we have to look at the job description, <coughs> NOC job description. So mm -hmm. uh, just in case if you are unable to get a uh, job offer in um, in uh, Ontario area you know I'm not saying maybe you will but uh, the second option to is to look in the Vancouver area so that's the second I think you should definitely uh, search you know go to uh, I mean uh, expand your search on Google on indeed uh, in the BC area British Columbia area so this yeah, is right now my kids are here in school wife is going to college so me going to BC will not be possible. <laughs> that's why it is limited to Ontario. Well, that's that's fine. I'm just, you know, who knows? Who knows? I mean, uh, I think those are minor issues. Uh, wife can wife can do online. Children can move. 
you have to you have to decide on your own. Yeah, right? We didn't want to take chance with her study visa no? and spoil. Oh, uh, no, study huh. visa will not be affected. Study visa will not be affected. Even if, if she does online, then it, it will be right. She well, has to be well, I, I I disagree. I think uh, you know you have to look at uh, university policy. Many universities are offering this program online while the students are in Canada also at the same time. They are not. They are uh, insisting on coming to college. So well, that's the okay. That's 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 okay. So these are the two uh, two provinces open for you, BC and uh, uh, and Ontario, and this is how you go. So just to just to summarize, one is Canadian Experience Class, which is a flagship program. The second is RNIP for uh, uh, you know for anybody who has a work experience there. Uh, mm -hmm. Third is the Global Skills Strategy Program, and the fourth is the Ontario Nominee Program, and the fifth is the BC. Okay. So we have five different options. They're all waiting for you to move forward. Yes, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. I, I knew a couple of them, but not all. So uh, yeah. yeah, yes. Once I have a job offer, I'll definitely reach out again to see if we can move forward there. All right. I'm all looking right. forward to your team's assistance. Uh, I know you have some experienced people working with you as well. Okay. Uh, okay. If you're legally clear, you know, I need that help. I'm 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 quite glad that uh, you you did this application on your own. Uh, many of times on my videos, I have told uh, people, even if even if those who wanted me to do the application, I said, look, uh, perhaps you can consider doing this on your own. And uh, if, if something you know, something that you know maybe you should at least at least attempt to do it. If you are not successful, that's okay. You can always go to a lawyer. But uh, you you did this application uh, after a gap of 14 plus years, your wife got a study visa, uh, you got the accompanying dependent visa at the same time simultaneously. Uh, it is uh, it is a quite a perfect uh, application. And, and whoever got whoever consultant got your application, I think he, he, he probably cherry picked his way to get, getting a good. <laughs> Yeah, it it it, it, ha it was a combination of everything. We had to push him uh, because they were not comfortable with putting our applications together initially. Yeah. Uh, so financially, we ensured that we show sufficient funds. Yeah. Uh, chose the right course, and we were persistent that you know we want to do it together. Otherwise, we will not push that. So, how much how much funds did you show besides paying the fees and the GIC? Uh, we showed um, uh, at least thirty plus. Uh, in bank. I'm sorry, 30 lakh rupees? Yes. Yeah, that's sufficient amount of money. <laughs> many people, many people. Not after you come here with kids. <laughs> it's oh, getting oh, over oh, very quickly. Oh, oh, no, I, I, I do understand. Many people, many people will have meager savings so around in the range of five lakhs or 10 lakhs, and they will struggle to pay the fees and stuff. So I think that way your application is, uh, you know, quite well endowed uh, from all directions. Uh, good English, good uh, university program, uh, good professional uh, background of the student, uh, existing Canada uh, visa and travel history, um, husband also in the profession, um, plus uh, abundant financial resources to cap it off. I think uh, who can, uh, you know, who, <laughs> who, who can expect a better client profile than than this uh, it's all, it all better than this i think this is the perfect client profile one thing i missed uh, there was an interview that was happened you know, not for my wife but they called my wife's current employer your your voice is breaking up you have to come to the microphone i think I'm yeah sorry. i forgot maybe something that i missed they did call my wife's employer it was that oh, verification also, That's something which was new to me, and we didn't expect that, but luckily that did not spoil anything for us. So somebody, somebody from the visa office called your wife's employer to check whether she's working to check the employment. Yes. And what she questions did. were they asked? Uh, how did they hire her? Because the company was based out of New Delhi, she was a remote employee from Bangalore. Okay. And they inquired about you know, how did they hire? What was her job responsibility? How she had job, etc. 
Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, many many people many people in uh, uh, in the process of applying for Canada visa sometimes they give me an idea that you know look I'm not working but what if I show a fake experience or something that that is not true and uh, uh, just to fill in the gap or just to impress somebody and I and I always tell them it's an extremely bad idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, when in your example, when when they investigate, they will dig deep. Uh, they will find out everything, and uh, you know uh, they will, uh, you know, assure themselves that they are they are dealing with the right documents, the right experience, and good facts. They did. They did go into that detail. So, if someone's trying to fake it out, then if they're not going to succeed, I guess. That's right. That's right. Sir. I'm glad. I'm glad everything came out good and. Uh, you are here and uh, everything is looking out good and Canada uh, deserves uh, uh, people and clients like you. And uh, very soon, hopefully very soon, within a few months, if not years, uh, you will get the PR that you that you deserve. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You have any more, any other question for me or? Not at this point. Uh, like we discussed, once I have, once I make some progress on job offer for myself, um, I will reach out to you again so we can move ahead with any other plans that we can. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you.